Hi, and welcome to my presentation about the magical world of modularity. So, yeah, so uh, I see new fa old faces and new faces, and, you know, like, um, I always present this technology as something magical and red, but you know, like most of us who already experienced it or worked with it, uh, you know, it's like this, something like this. Uh, yeah. So basically, uh, who? Yeah. Who am I? I'm uh, Martin Turley, as I was already said. I'm a senior software engineer at Red Hat and also a product owner of software management at Red Hat, which includes also modularity and other projects. So yeah. Uh, so. Yeah, we talked, uh, like maybe you heard about modularity, maybe not. So it's, uh, yeah, uh, what it uh, is uh, uh, exactly. So modularity was a project which was conceived uh, through the notion that uh, we wanted to include m basically uh, multiple uh, different uh, uh, flavors of, of software uh, in a RPM repository, or basically uh, it's an auxiliary packaging method which you can use for for doing exactly this. Uh, exa uh, for example, uh, let's let's take Perl. Uh, normally, when you have a standard uh, stable distribution, let's say like Fedora, uh, you have only one major version of of a package. So and it's and it's supported for for the whole lifetime of this uh, distribution. But what we wanted to do is basically, let's say, I want to include more pearls, not only one, but also I want to call the package Perl. So we have like three packages of Perl, and you know, like when you do this the standard way, it's a conflict and bad things happen. So uh, yeah, so basically, uh, you can also imagine um, uh, what, uh, what modularity enables is basically that it uh, puts a um, repository inside your repository. <laughs> so yeah, so uh, the problem with modularity is that uh, in the uh, already existing packaging uh, uh, ecosystem, it um, um, introduced a lot of nomenclature which people didn't know, and I will try to explain at least the basics. Like, like people always talk in modularity about modules, but what exactly is a module? So don't forget that in modularity, I, I use a lot of fancy words, but we still talk about packages, about RPM packages and, and such. So what is a module? Basically, like the definition is that module is a one or more sets of software packages which can be described in one name or something like that. So uh, each of those, uh, each, of, uh, each set of those software packages is called a module stream, which is another word. So we have a module and then a module stream, which are two different things. But basically, uh, module defines all the module streams inside it. So, yeah. So, what is a module stream? No, a module stream. Uh, yeah. So, module stream represents RPM packages which can, which are built and bundled uh, together. Um, yeah. So, each module stream uh, con consists of uh, RPM uh, binary files and a metadata YAML file. This is important because if you have only the um, uh, binary files, like RPM files, you cannot install them without the metadata. Like a DNF or YAM or whatever will not allow you to do that because all the uh, uh, RPMs uh, which are built, let's say, in Fedora or other distributions have a fail safe inside it which, which you know, doesn't allow you to do that. This is uh, by design because the metadata, the YAML file, um, describes other configuration options for this set of packages. Uh, and of course, this metadata, as I wrote, is not a part of the RPM files headers like it was uh, in, the, like, like, it's, like it's standard when you are just working with uh, packages. Yeah, uh, so the second thing is the, that, you know, when you, you know, I, I, again, I used a lot of fancy words, like you, maybe you cannot imagine how this looks like in your directory when you're just working with RPM files, but basically, you can have a module, you can also think ab uh, uh, about a module like a mm, uh, meta package, so basically, you can just put a bunch of uh, RPMs in a directory and just create a YAML file which will describe this, this bunch of um, uh, RPM files. 
it, they can be any RPM files. Don't, they don't have to be part of a module, or they can just be a non-modular uh, standard content which you can find in any uh, RPM-based distribution. The, of course, the, the, the way uh, how those uh, packages are built, or uh, what are the dependencies, and that's, that's your problem. You know, you have to know how they interact together so you can basically do that. Uh, yeah, one thing what I need to mention is that there is so much about modularity that I will not be able to cover all of it, so I just giving you the, like, the main like, highlights, like what you need to know to start, and then you can look at our documentation, which was uh, updated recently, so try it. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, as I already uh, talked about the failsafe, basically also like the failsafe is, is just, an, just a string inside the RPMs, binary RPMs header, which says that I'm from a module. So I, I cannot be installed by myself. Yeah, uh, so as I said uh, earlier, um, modularity brought a lot of uh, new nomenclature into everything, and uh, modules or module streams are uh, named differently. They don't use the Nevra convention. Of course, the RPM files inside the module uh, stream still use the Nevra convention, so it's fine. Uh, but the whole bunch or the group of those RPM files uh, uses a different naming convention, which is called NSVC, which is name, stream, uh, stream and uh, version context. So for, for like, uh, quickly go through this, uh, you know, um, a module is defined by its name. So as I said, a module contains uh, multiple sets of RPM files which, which are bundled and built together. Each of those sets is called a stream. So then you have like name, stream. So you have a, a, a additional thing. Like, like I, I explained there, like you use Perl 524 and Perl 526. Of course, when you have uh, something like that in Fedora and you want to use, you can use only one of those. Yeah, you cannot use 524 uh, and also 526 because how your system will know like, which one to use. So basically you will choose like, okay, so I want to enable this module, Perl 524, and what will happen inside your system, it will, it will basically mask all the uh, it will it will uh, op um, it will mask all the non-modular content which is um, which has something to do with Perl and will just use the RPMs from this um, stream. Yeah, <laughs> I know it's complicated. Uh, next is module version. Basically, module version uh, tells us which of the uh, module streams is the latest one. Uh, it, mostly it depends, of course, if you are building it locally or you are building it in a distribution. In, in Fedora, we use uh, the timestamp of the git commit that you are building from. So, so module version is basically that, uh, you know, DNF can look at the modules and say, okay, so, uh, you know, um, order them uh, uh, with, uh, by, by version, I know which is the newest one and I can update your packages. Yeah, context. This is the, I would say, biggest, like, think that people don't understand how this works. As I said previously, module streams is a set of um, packages which are built and, and bundled and installed together. So context in this metadata file that I mentioned earlier define how actually you are setting up your, yeah, you are setting up your, uh, you are setting up your uh, build root, how you, uh, what, what do you need, what dependencies do you need actually to be installed together with those, and so on. So context is like a configuration for this specific set of uh, packages. So for example, uh, you can have, uh, you know, context can be different configurations for different distros, uh, for different set of modular dependencies, which I will not go into here because it's too much to go through. <laughs> so, yeah, next is, yeah, breakage and conflicts. The one thing that you need to uh, imagine that uh, normally people are used to uh, Linux distribution that it's stable. So people, when they are working on a distribution, they do all the things, 
they, they you know, update their packages and so on, and they agree like, okay, so for this distribution, we will have only this version of, of software, and you know, we will support it until, until end of the distribution. Fine, everyone is fine with this. And yeah, you know, uh, the packages uh, are trying to do that they will not break other people's packages, so, so that basically the distribution is stable. With modules, you can actually break your distribution <laughs> because uh, you you still have the stable distribution, but you can enable like let's say with Perl, let's say you have in the standard distribution you have 524, which is like non-modular, not in a module, just a normal package. But let's say you will say, okay, I need for my I don't know something for my application 526. So I will enable the 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 uh, I will enable the stream 526 the 524 non modular will be replaced by 2026 20, which is fine but it, it, if the if the packager didn't you know check all the possibilities he can like change your how how other people other um, uh, packages are interacting with this Perl, which is a different version and there there can be breakage so this is this is something to keep in mind that if you are using modules like it's like alternative software so if you are using those please keep in mind that breakage and conflicts can can appear also when you have like there are multiple uh, things we have some um, mentioned on the documentation on in fedora like the like conflicts and breakage and so on so you can look at those there um, yeah, so one uh, additional, I already spoke about that, you can have all enabled only one stream at a time. So when you have module, uh, like Perl, and you have 524 uh, Perl and 526, when you enable 524, you, you, are not, uh, you cannot use packages for, from 526, because it will not, not uh, you know, then we will say like, no, the, the, I did have this enabled and I will not do other packages. Yeah, I, yeah, and I already talked about like, packages. Yeah, it's it's a little bit harder because you know you have more software to get stable with with the distribution. But yeah, yeah, building modules. So as I already said, you you can just take any uh, RPMs you have, put them into directory, put a YAML file, uh, run, um, run create repo C, and you have like a module. Uh, Building locally module build. We have a tool called module build. It's still like uh, like fresh. It's like I, uh, the first version was released in uh, January or February. So, uh, but we are we are improving it. We added like building from uh, source RPMs and so on. And then we have uh, like building Fedora. There is a link to the uh, to the um, uh, to the official documentation in, in Fedora. If you yeah, if you look at the, the Fedora documentation and you saw see something that is that you don't know or you need to add to this documentation, please write to us on Fedora Devil, to me, to uh, modularity team. There is our contacts on the documentation. So please, 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 we want like uh, input from people outside of you know Red Hat and like mo mostly community. Yes, and then we have an uh, additional tool, which is also, uh, you can install it in, in uh, Fedora. It's called Module uh, MD Tools. If you want just uh, like quick uh, like tooling, uh, which will enable you to work with modules. Yeah, uh, oh yeah this is again, links. Uh, and yeah, we have also modular metadata YAML specs. So if you want to like, build your own YAML without the distribution, you can just check the, this, this document. There is, everything is commented and, uh, and described. Yes, and that's all. Thanks. So, questions? Yes? What are the general problems that cannot be fixed, right? Something comes to the distribution and breaks other packages. And maintainers of these packages will basically send this to the to hell, saying, well, we never tested with this dependency. It was something else for our distribution, right? Mm -hmm. No, it's not. Uh, yeah. So, so the question was like, if if someone will uh, will bring uh, will create, let's say, a module, and this module uh, will, when you enable it and and uh, you know run it, it will let's say break your system that some of your uh, system applications will not work. Like, who is responsible for this? Uh, oh, uh, yeah. So, so as I said uh, previously, r uh, how it works right now in Fedora or other distributions is that that uh, packages are collaborating together with with normal uh, uh, content, not modular content, only non normal content, which they basically agree, like, okay, so I did this change to your software, and I see, okay, we changed the API, and it bro broke something else. So we need to work on it so the release will be stable. So this is the same for modules. Like, mo modules, modules are not something, modules are not something, like, different from RPMs. There are still RPMs.
Mm -hmm. I, as a packager of this particular software, which I put to the distribution, is responsible for the fact that it works in this environment. Yes. And that's where I test it. Yes. Right? And then there is another movement in the same distribution yes. at the same time, mm -hmm. right? Where people are building some modules with mm -hmm. some software, mm -hmm. libraries of different yeah. versions, something, yeah, something, something, mm -hmm. right? And I'm, as a packager, I don't want to know about these modules. Yeah, of course. Uh, <laughs> so, so you are responsible that your module will work with the stable, non-modular packages. You are not responsible that you have to be, you know, because, because the metrics, when you think about it, the metrics is like three-dimensional and it's crazy. So, no, no, no. You are responsible only for your module to work with the base distribution. If it works, then that's fine. If, if someone will uh, open, uh, like use other modules and then will you, you, you use your module and everything will be broken, then, you know, it's, it's on the person who basically set up it in, in this way. So. Right, I mean, maybe I'm not asking about like who to blame, right? But I mean how to bring this to a usable state where I, as a user, can see, oh, there Bandula. are modules available to these distributions and I can enable them and nothing bad will happen because something uh, will happen. You cannot do that. You, like there is no automatic process where you can like create modules and say like they will never break anything. Yeah, like, like you know, you have, you have modules which are more stable, let's say Postgres, like we have like uh, like free free streams in Fedora, which which basically when you you know, you know install one, then if you uninstall it and install the, uh, another one from another stream, they don't really break you know anything. They are just like databases, so this is fine. But yes, as we had with Perl, yeah, it can happen. Yeah, yeah. That's why it's as I at uh, the start there was like meme memes, you know, like always like it's fine. So <laughs> yeah. Just a short question. So, why would I want this? <laughs> uh, What's the use case? Or it, it, it depends because you know, like I, I you know, I uh, when I did examples for, with Perl, let's say I only let's say said that the streams are major versions. But you don't have to have major versions. You can have like different, you know, configurations. Uh, not only build build time, but also runtime for your for your package. So, if you need this, that you ha you can have like uh, multiple, let's say. Uh, different uh, flavors of your application, let's say for uh, I don't know for development for for something else. So you can you can use modules for that. So for, basically, this was built for RHEL. Sorry, this was uh, this, this was uh, um, primarily built for RHEL because you know uh, this is something where we have a use case. Uh, actually, actually, I forgot that. Thank you. You reminded me. Is that this technology is really used in uh, sandbox environment. Uh, all all the all dependencies uh, which uh, uh, are go, going to a flat pack are, are modules. Like flat pack uses modules, containers use use modules because it's easy to build a system that you want, like a you know ready-made uh, sandbox that you will just like reproduce without problems. I would, and you are not uh, you are not actually uh, dependent on the uh, stable stuff in the distribution because if you want to play, you can. Yep. So, uh, yeah, so the question is, how many modules are in Fedora? So right now, I think like 20 maybe, or 10? Between 10 and 20. Uh, I, just, just do DNF module list. <laughs> <laughs> like normally, um, it depends on the the version, uh, like release of the distribution for Fedora. Let's say we we don't have like the Perl, we don't have like 524, 526, and 530, and also we have 532, but we don't have all of them for all. So we have like for the newest 36 uh, Fedora, we have like only two, like the last last two for 30 and 42. How does how this relate to software co collections? Yeah, so yeah, this, <laughs> this was this was uh, basically this is a replacement. The the only like downside of this like with with uh, software collections you had uh, parallel instability. With this you don't. But actually, when we when we run the numbers uh, in our with our customers, then you know like only like five percent people use this. 
the file instantly. And also people were angry because they were used that packages are ending up in the directories that, that they expect to. And when you have software collections, they are installed somewhere else. And you know, when they had like automation, this was a problem. <laughs> Okay, if there are no more questions, thank you, Martin, for the presentation. Thank you.